Hello and welcome to this mini webinar series on low and no tech options. Um, so I'm excited you guys are all here because this one's kind of a fun one for me. Um, I did this as an hour session, so I'm I, doing this as a half hour. I'm going to kind of buzz through a few things, but I have a Wakelet. If you're not familiar with Wakelet, it is a um, kind of like if you've used Padlet, it's a curation tool that lets you put all of your resources in one place. I use it all the time. I'll even show you a cute little or a great little shortcut with Wakelet and see why I use it. Um, but I'm going to give you a Wakelet that has all of the links to everything that I show you. So that way, if you want to explore later, um, I, this one's kind of a, a, a big, you know, resource dump on you. So um, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. So stick to one or two of them, get to know them really well, get comfortable with them, use them with your kids, see how they go. And then you can always add more later. So um, let me share the resource with you. I'm going to share the slide deck. I'm going to put it right in the chat box for you so you have access to it. You should be able to just link it and grab it. And then I will get started here. If for some reason um, that doesn't work, there is a bit.ly on the screen as well. Um, it's the bit.ly backslash low no tech, and that is completely lowercase, and that will get you to it as well. Um, I was thinking that when I go low or no tech, for me, that's relax time because I spend so much time on technology. So I was thinking, well, where do I relax? I like to relax at the beach. So I went with a beach theme for this one. Um, plus, I'm missing the beach right now. I usually get to spend a little time there and I haven't been there since all of this has happened. So I'm missing the beach a little bit. So you guys know me, I'm the assistant coordinator for model schools at Washington, Saratoga, Warren, Hamilton and Essex BOCES. Um, you can reach me, um, I'll put my email in the chat because I don't have it on the slide for some reason. And then I have two different Twitter handles. My personal one is at Smile Learning, and then my BOCES one is the Wish We BOCES MS for Model Schools. Um, so you can certainly reach me that way as well. So we're gonna talk about some easy games you can play, some exploration, some things to get your kids moving, and some art and music kind of exploration. And then um, I do have some low tech relaxation uh, kind of things at the end. We'll see if we get to it. We may not in a half an hour. Um, but let's talk first about easy games to play. So on this resource, and I'm not going to open all of these, but on here, um, bingo is a great one to play with your kids because you can use it with any subject and you could create any card. So I gave you a couple links for resources for ones that you can kind of um, grow with, but you can build your own. Your students can use um, a marker, a pen, um, you know, bingo chips if they have them, coins, whatever they have at home to cover their spots. Um, and it's something you can do both as a sitting down uh, synchronous activity with your students, or you can send them out with a, a printable sheet to go out into their backyard and do a sketchable um, bingo kind of thing where they, they um, see what they can find in nature and then they sketch what they saw. Um, if you wanna go more high tech, they can use their camera and take digital photos. Um, if you're high school or middle school and the kids have iPhones, you can do that sort of thing where they create their own digital board. So you can choose how low to no tech you want bingo to be, but it's a fun activity. There are some more um, updated ones or um, not updated, some more higher tech ones um, that you can use. My favorite being Bingo Baker. And I am going to open that one real quick. I'm not gonna walk you through how to use it because um, that could be a training in and of itself. But what you do is right here, you'll see on your screen, you can change the size of your bingo board. So if you're younger kids or first time doing it, you can do a three by three right up to a five by five. You title it and then within each box, you can add images, colors, text. Um, you can change the way it looks. You can change the colors of your grid. And once this is all done, you can add extra words so that way your bingo cards can all be different. Once it's all done, you click generate. And what it does is it creates a board. So if I just grab one, so I grab baby shower one here. Um, you'll see that I have the board here. I have all of the extra uh, bingo cards that are available. You share this link with um, your students. And what they do is as soon as they get that link, it says they um, have to generate their card. And then that, that their own unique card is generated. So once you're playing the game and you're doing different things as students are going through, all they have to do is click in the box and it will um, it will change it that they've got it. When they've got bingo, they shout out bingo. So um, it's a pretty easy one for you to do with your kids, uh, but Bingo Baker is also printable, so it could be very no tech as well. 
Another one, and I'm actually doing a whole um, half hour on this, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, is Flippity. And what Flippity does is it takes your Google Sheet, but it makes it into really cool activities. So you can create flashcards, you can create random name spinners, you can choose randomized wheels. So if you want students to tell creative stories, um, you can create um, actual manipulatives, and they do have bingo in here as well. Uh, hangman, word scrambles, word search, Mad Libs, anything you can think of that you can use um, different types of games, these will create them for you. Um, and then they walk you through the process. So if you're interested in learning more about Flippity, come to the one later in the week. That one is on, Flippity is on Friday. So you can come to that one on Friday. Another great one you can do is scavenger hunts. Again, that whole sketching idea, it doesn't have to be bingo. You can do um, scavenger hunt where you give them a list of things that you can find outside, see if they can find it. You can do this with colors as well. Um, you can do it with any kind of coding. Uh, actually on this link, uh, Wonder Workshop put out some printable ones that they get the, the command, which is drive forward and here's the block code so they can learn some basic coding. I am doing a coding one this week as well. Um, so we'll talk more about what the coding actually means in the blocks, but you can print these out, give them to your students, they can um, cut and paste, and then they play like almost like a matching game with them as part of a scavenger hunt. You can do scavenger hunts with uh, sight words. Uh, there's a really great one for feelings, which I think right now with everything going on, um, students need that social emotional help. So Centervention has put together some different scavenger hunts for feelings. Um, they also have some different uh, coping skills work workbooks and different things. So it's a great resource for you. It's all free that you can use right from their website. If you want to go more high tech than uh, printable, Goose Chase is a fabulous scavenger hunt. Your students will need something they can take pictures on. So probably this is more for kids that have tablets or phones. Um, but what they do or what you do is you create a game with it. So you tell them to find something with uh, the colors of the rainbow or, you know, um, find, find a different dance or whatever it happens to be. They have to find these different things and take a photo of it. And then on your dashboard, you can actually see all the images coming in as they're going through um, the different challenges. So this could be something you do over a period of a week or you can do it in an hour, um, but it gets your kids moving around and uh, doing different things. So you create it, the students um, actually get to, uh, to try to uh, beat the challenges that you have on there. So if you're curious on how it works, you can go through, they, have, they walk you step by step on the process. It's very low tech as far as how to set it up. And then try it out with you know one or two people or try it yourself where you have two different devices so you can see how it kind of runs and then off you go from there another fun one and this one again is um, it can work on your computer but it's a little harder um, but this is an ai experiment from google and ai is artificial intelligence and so google creates these little games they look to see if um if they're popular or if they need a lot of work or whatever but think of it like a beta and what the um, student will do is they click let's play and then an emoji is going to come up at the top of the screen and they have to find that emoji. So here they have to find a computer. So um, see the little computer icon. So if I grab I have a computer here. Did I just see a China cabinet? Was that a China cabinet? If you grab a computer, um, it, it says, oh, you found it. OK. And then, oh, that's a lovely picture of me. And then you go on to the next one and you play the game. So they have to find something that matches the emoji um, on their screen. So maybe the TV might be the, there we go. <laughs> so you can see how that goes. It plays the game. Kids love it. They find it super fun. They're running around the house. It's pretty low tech um, because they just have to have the app or go to the website. Um, and then they get running around and doing different things. Lori? Yes. Um, are we supposed to be seeing your screen? Yeah, you can't see my screen? No. Oh, you should tell me. Here I am showing you all of these cool things and nobody said a word. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Oh, you're welcome. I know I left a message. Someone else left a message too. Oh, in the chat? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yep, sorry. No, you're all fine. Right. So um, we'll, uh, let me do a quick review then just so I can show you what you see. Um, so we did the bingo baker. Um, you can change, I'm just gonna show you a couple quick things. You can change the different size here as you create the cards and you go through. Um, so if I was using this card, when the students click this link, it generates the card. And as they click, it changes over. Okay, so that's that one there. Um, when I was doing the scavenger hunt, oh, I closed out that one, the emoji one. You can see my screen now, right? 
Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, when I click Let's Play, um, just so I can show you, the emoji comes up at the top. All right, so I had to find a computer. And they're usually different. It's weird that it came out with the same one. <laughs> Somehow it got that from my face. But, um, you know, it'll be a mug or um, it'll be a smiley face or a T-shirt. So here I'm wearing a T-shirt, so it should usually grab me. It doesn't want to, but um, it'll do different things that way. So there's the emoji one. That's okay. All right. So storytelling. Um, I was a former sixth grade English teacher. So, um, or I am a former English teacher. So I love anything that has to do with games and storytelling. Um, so there are different ways that you can create stories within the house. So uh, this library has actually put together a whole bunch of different ideas where they do like collect and build a story. So here the students find, you know, five objects and then they have to tell a story of those objects. And they walk you through different ideas with drawing and different things there. So it's a great uh, low tech or no tech resource. Uh, for build a story, there are great uh, great challenge cards that 3D Bear has put together for you. 3D Bear is an augmented reality app. You don't have to use the app to use the cards, but you send these out to your kids, they cut them out, and then they have to pick one of each color to create their story. So they pick a preference, they pick a place, they pick their character, um, they pick the challenge, and then there's usually a curveball. And then um, from here, they tell their story based on the different things. Or you can give them the topics and the students have to create their own. Or if you're using Flippity, you could actually um, create this on a wheel um, so the students spin it and get whatever they get. Um, one of the other fun ways you, to play with kids is uh, to tell a story is yes, then. So the student tells a sentence, the next student says yes, and then, and then tells the next part. Uh, one of the things I used to do with my sixth graders is I'd give them each a photo. Um, some of them funny, some of them odd, some of them they don't know quite what it is. And then they have to tell a story about that picture. And then we post all the uh, photos and then the students have to try to figure out which photo goes with the story. Um, so they can't say, like if it's a picture of a tractor, they can't use the word tractor. They have to describe it and add details to try to tell the story around it without actually saying it's a tractor. Um, so that way it helps students out. Great time right now to do journaling and time capsules. Freeze Face is a game I play actually with my family. We um, we're big American Idol watchers and Ryan Seacrest's face is really funny if you pause the screen. Um, so it kind of became something we've been playing for years where uh, we'll pause the screen and then whatever his face looks like, we have to tell the story of the face. What is he going to say next? And it has to not relate to American Idol, it has to be something completely unusual and um, unexpected that would be coming out next. So it's a, it's a fun little game to play um, where you just freeze any kind of show and then you try to figure out what they, they're going to say. To take it a little more high tech, 3D Bear is a fabulous app. That one only works on tablets and phones, um, but it is a layer of augmented reality that is super fun for, um, for your students to try out. They have dinosaurs, they have letters, they have um, things you'd find in your house. They have weekly challenges. Right now, um, last week was uh, building your own virtual um, study area, like what it would look like if you could build your own um, classroom kind of thing. Um, this week, I think it's, I, I don't know, it's some, I think it's some sort of dance or something like that. Um, Google Spotlight Stories are 360 degree stories. So you, you download them or they have some of them on YouTube and then the students can actually watch a video, but they see it all the way around in 360. So they can turn and see different parts of the story and see the whole perspective. Pixar Shorts are something that I've used a ton in my classroom. So what Pixar uh, Shorts does is um, they have these great little theatrical shorts, but they're really, uh, they tell a story in a very short period of time. My favorite was the birds, this one right here. Um, I use this one for context clues. I've used it for bullying. I've used it for um, sequencing, you know, and, uh, all these different things that you can use in your classroom. So there are great robust videos that are totally free for you to use um, that tell a really in-depth story. So um, they don't usually have words, which is even better. Um, for your students to kind of go through and explore. So low tech, because they just have to watch a little video, you can assign it to them, um, you know, and they can watch them and do different things with them. Co-spaces is your high tech one where they can create their own augmented and virtual reality worlds. And then, you know, I never could go through a, a presentation without mentioning Buncee at least once. Um, and Buncee is a great one for any kind of storytelling. And if you go out to their ideas lab, they have tons of templates that you could just assign to students. 
Other at-home games, I'm giving you tons of resources here for dice games, cards games, building recipes, math games, creating your own game. And then um, Polypad is extremely low tech. Um, it's for Mathagon. And what it is, is it's just a board where you can use different manipulatives for math. So it gives kids a good pad to kind of play around and do different things that you normally would do in your class. You might have this as a center. Um, it gives you some different tiles to use. There are, if you go up to activities, other sites within it that are really cool. Mathematical Origami will actually let you download the nets for like a dodecahedron with folding in instructions on how to use it and what to do with it. Um, you can do the, a timeline for mathematics. They have, you know, your kids want to study, what would we use math for? Here's a whole bunch of information on what you could use math for. So these are, you know, I mean, it's endless. Um, you know, you click on one of these and they'll tell you, here's a, a career about a uh, coral reef. This one's a new one. So let's grab one that's been around a while. Um, Cause there's a ton of them. Here we go. So it gives some information about it and it gives you some resources at the bottom. So they have all these different activities that are free for you to use that you can explore that have to do with math. So I think these would be kind of fun. Tanagrams are fun. They give you the, you know, the different pieces, but you can click the shadow and then you have to build it using these pieces. So really simple to use, very low tech because you just go to the website and click and go. All right, moving on. Virtual games. So um, those were your low, low tech. Uh, these get a little bit higher tech, but really not. Everify is free. I don't, they must um, get some great funding because it's, these are robust um, activities for your students that have to do with life skills. So if you click on the K-12 and you click on their course library, you're going to see that they have all these different topics, STEM, financial education, health education, social emotional learning, um, cultural literacy, and they even have some summer, you know, miss, you know, avoid the summer slide. They also have ones that are um, tied to um, scholarships. So there's ones uh, for economics, for example, that the students complete and then they can apply for a thousand dollar scholarship if they're in high school. Um, some of the younger ones, like they have financial literacy for um, elementary where it talks about needs versus wants and um, that sort of thing. So they're different activities. They're very game-based. The kids go through, they watch uh, these little mini videos, they go into these imaginary lands and they do these different activities. Um, as they're going through. So it's it's very hands-on. It's uh, totally self-driven for students. You assign the, um, the course to them, they log in and off they go. Um, so it's a really great resource. And this is Edlaw 2D compliant. So um, feel safe to you know use this one with your students for any of these. The hockey one is super fun. It's uh, all about future goals. It's about um, real world scenarios, about um, math and science and all these different things. So really a great resource. Um, the Smithsonian has put together uh, a ton of these fun STEM games. Be careful with these um, only because they have, some of them are flash based, so they may or may not work on their devices. So test them out first. But what's nice about these is um, they're really fun, engaging games. So when you click on go to the game and you click play, the game will load. And then the students have to play the game um, that comes up on the screen. Um, this one is like a bunch of shapes, kind of like Stack the States was, if you remember that one, where they have to stack the shapes to help the monkey eat the um, the fruit. So we click on new game, um, you know, they enter, and then it walks you through the directions, and then you drag the, the shape, and then um, once you hit go, oh, yeah, drag more than one shape, it's telling me. Okay, now I can hit go, uh, and then there's going to be a, Alligator goes by, kind of shakes the shapes up a little bit. Then the monkey's going to climb the uh, the fruit, and they'll see if they can get to it. So they're they're playing with different shapes. They're exploring. They're fun little games. They have them all the way up to middle school level. Um, so like life science, um, and then right up to earth science for middle school. They have different games you can play on there. All right, um, Breakout Edu. If you haven't, well, Kahoot, you guys all know, I'm sure. Google Earth um, has a Where in the World is Carmen San Diego game. This one takes a little while to load, so I'm not going to actually load that one. Um, but it plays a game where they actually search the Google Earth to find Carmen. Um, Kahoot is free right now, so um, upgrade, try it out if you haven't already. Breakout Edu every day at two o'clock, and I've made my kids do it every day at two o'clock. They have a different activity. We did a couple last week. We did one on geometry. We did one on um, uh, grammar last week. Um, yesterday, my my son did the periodic table one. So they go, and it takes about ten minutes to do at, and it's live. So you watch a video, and it walks you through the process, 
and um, you try to solve the clues, you can actually win real prizes. So they win um, Spiros. Um, the breakout EDU kits are um, sent to them with the assumption they'll donate it to the teacher um, and or they can be donated to the teacher and then they have at home kits. So you can take a look and see. And each week it's different prizes. Last week it was um, a Spiro Bolt. This week seems to be the Spiro Mini. So um, you can win real prizes by doing these. And they're fun for kids. Um, as far as low tech exploration. So if we go to these live cams, um, this one is a pretty robust one. You can look at anything you're interested in. So let's say you want to go to uh, look in the water here. We're looking in an aquarium. You could choose any of these different sites and take a look and um, it takes you to that site and you can watch. So, and you can take pictures of it. You can just explore. Um, some of them are completely live. Some of them are video, like where they got the best of and you can really see different things. But you can see you have all of these different cams around the world for all different things with animals and nature. Um, science webinars, these are ones that you can sign up and they have different ones. They do one a day, but they offer it several times throughout the day. So it works within your schedule. Farm tours will literally, literally take you to these 360 degree tours of farms, another aquarium, and then 360 stories is a great one, even for your upper kids. Um, let's say they want to go to Paris, for example, they can click on a spot and then they can see all these different uh, 360 pictures of the different spots that they might want to see. When they click on one and they choose it, it opens up this 360 degree image. But you'll notice sometimes it has these little blue dots. If it does, it means there's more information. So you can see this one loaded some other images for you. Um, if some of them will also have uh, recordings of things or people talking and they'll talk you through virtual tours. Not all of them are free, so make sure you're only clicking the free ones. Um, it'll prompt you if for some reason you pick something else. All right. Just making sure there's no other questions coming through. Um, as far as other get moving games, obstacle courses, chalk games, learning to juggle. I mean, you can go on YouTube and um, learn to juggle. I gave you some resources for indoor recess and hula hoop games. Um, and then if you want more low tech, go noodle we all know and love for the classroom, but you certainly can do it at home. Cosmic yoga is fabulous. It takes all the different cartoon characters that your children know and they can um, do yoga with them. Um, this, this one, the exercise class is an upper level one for your middle school, high school kids. The Learn to Dance is actually a dancer who teaches you, like there's a song for Moana that she does and, and there's different ones that you can do where she teaches you the steps of a dance. And then um, this resource is a create and play where you create something and you play with it more for your younger kids. For art and music, there are so many great ones here um, that you can check out. The conducted orchestra, the students literally stand behind their computer. And in artificial intelligence world, they, um, they as they move their arms, it conducts the music. So kind of a fun experience for them. I'm obviously not a conductor based on how my hands are moving. Um, Rue Goldberg, um, well, this will take you out to some challenges to try out. The Curiosity Machine is for your higher end kids or for your upper level kids, I should say, and anything to do with environmental, um, chemi chemical, all the different engineering, computer science, um, where it takes you through all of these different activities to try at home. I would say these are probably your upper middle all the way through high school. So it's invention ideas, like the Rude Goldberg is actually on there, and it teaches you some different things about different um, areas in science. Um, art Geek and Babble Dabble Do are art videos on YouTube. Same with Sidewalk Chalk has some different uh, ideas there. I gave you a coloring book. That's all very low tech. Other great ones. The Inventive Challenge, actually, you can um, you don't have to assign these to kids. You just send it out. They actually extended the um, deadline to May 8th, but this is to win real prizes. But they give you a whole Inventive Challenge um, process so they can enter. You know, it's on the later side now to do it, but they're they're going to go through um, the seven levels of invention kind of thing. And then the winner actually gets a trip to Washington, D.C. I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not, but it's on there. And then moving back in, uh, Backyard Engineering gives you ideas of different things to do in your backyard. Hogwarts, they actually opened up this website for free right now. So you actually can go in and explore the world of Harry Potter. So um, you can read. There's some reading. There's some different activities, so you can um, see which house you belong to, take your mug muggle quiz, there's paper craft, you can do word searches, all sorts of different things you can do um, on this website to kind of bring Harry Potter into your home. 
TED Ed, if you sign up, you pick which grade level you want, you'll get a once a week, um, or is it daily? I don't remember. Yeah, daily newsletter um, with a lesson that you could actually do. It's a full, you know, soup to nuts lesson that's wrapped around a um, TED Ed talk. So you can sign up for those. Um, Explore by the seat of your pants uh, does these amazing adventures throughout the world. You can see which ones are coming up by looking down at the bottom here. You can see, um, what is it say, today's the 28th. So today's is um, Thunderbolts, caves are tomorrow, um, you know, all different things. You can visit a zoo, you can look at, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, an unusual one. Does it fart? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can see all different ones there um, that are going through. Okay, Go um, does these great videos. I always use them in my classroom for um, transition time because kids love the videos so much. I would put on the video and tell them they had to move to the next activity before the video was done. And because they wanted to watch the video, they did it fast so they could sit and watch the, the video. So they're like three, four minutes long, but they're really... Um, visually appealing. This one's done in zero gravity. This one, it's a four second thing where they blow up everything, but then they slow it down into this four minute video. You can um, see the different uh, lessons around them. You can watch the videos. All the videos are free on YouTube, so you can check those out. All right. Google Arts and Culture is another great one with lots of different resources. If you want even more resources, I would check Common Sense EDU. They open a new website called Wide Open School. And the last thing I'm gonna share with you in our very quick half hour are some no uh, tech ideas for just chilling out. So five long, slow breaths with each breath you think is something that makes you, and then you give them the topic, happy, um, excited, you know, or it could be talking about the other side, nervous or scared, and then they t each time they take a breath as they're talking about it. Gave you some printables with those as well and then some different ideas. Um, the last one is a popular one on Twitter. It's called Gratitude Snaps, where the kids make a visual, which you can do on paper, or this one's on Buncee, where kids put down all the things that they're thankful for, and they call it a hashtag Gratitude Snap. All right, so I'm coming back to you guys for the last couple minutes, now that I've just dumped all this information on you. <laughs> How are we feeling? Right? <laughs> So on this last one, I'm gonna grab this link. On the last slide for you, all of the things that I showed you have, um, I'm gonna give you the link to. So anything that has a link, drop it in here. And that way you have a copy of it. I said I would show you this really cool thing on Wakelet too. So I'm gonna show you that before we run out of time here. So you'll see, I mean, I got a ton of tabs up. I've been deleting some, but if I actually left all these tabs open, I'd probably have 50 different things, right? and that gets overwhelming. So if I click over into this plus, instead of my website or my Chrome going to Google like yours does, I have a Wakelet extension. It's this little W up on my um, Chrome toolbar. And so instead of opening up in Google, it opens up in Wakelet. It takes a little getting used to the first few times you do it because you're like, wait a minute, where's my Google? And you actually have to Google Google to get to it. Um, but what's nice about it is if I'm doing a webinar or I'm, I'm sitting in on one and I have, ha I have all these um, tags open and I'm, I wanna keep them, you'll notice on the right hand side, all of my tabs are listed. These are all my open tabs that I have right now. Um, I can create a collection with those tabs with one click. So I click on it and it creates this collection immediately for me. All of those tabs become a link, which they're loading, here they come. All I have to do is enter a name, put whatever background I want. I can even change the layout so it looks more like a mood board or whatever I want it to be. And you'll see all of the resources that I have open are now these uh, these quick links for me. Um, and I can say tabs from whatever, you know, call it whatever I want. I hit done. And now I have this collection as one of my collections that I can do whatever I want with. I can share it with somebody. I can make it public. I can keep it private, whatever I want to do. Um, and then if I go back to my home page, you can see I have all these different collections that I've done on different things as I've been going through um, that you can create based on where you are and what you learn. You can even look at other people's collections. You can follow people, all of those kind of things. But it's a great way to kind of organize all of your resources. Any final thoughts, questions? <laughs> uh, my suggestion, pick one. Try it out. Um, you know, this is one of those that, you know, I'm giving you a ton of ideas, but pick an idea, maybe one a week, you know, maybe one total. Um, 
try it out, see how it works, and then go from there. All right. Sorry, I forgot to show you my screen at the beginning there. <laughs> Thank you, whoever unmuted to help me out. Um, let me do attendance one last time before you all um, leave me and have a great rest of your day.